Whoa, Professor Klein here today to talk to you guys about the eyeball. And yes, you were just seeing my eyeball close up, but I want to talk about this eyeball right here. All right, this is a really cool eye model that we've got. And I'm just going to run through some external structures and then dive deep in there as well. And this one's different than the other eye model that we have. It doesn't have as much external structures. Whoop piece of tape left from the final exam but you can see this video up here in the link above but back to this one here and if we start with these gray structures you'll notice there's one on the top one on the bottom they're called the tarsus or the eyelids but this is the superior tarsus and this is the inferior tarsus right here there's no eyelashes shown on here, but the eyelashes would be coming down. There is a lacrimal gland, this big brown thing right here, the lacrimal gland, which produces tears. And tears would travel into the eye right across this glass part that we call the cornea and also the sclera, the white part of the eye, and sweep laterally. This is laterally where the lacrimal gland is across the eye medially to the medial side. Now there's a lot of green stuff on the medial side here. And these green things are the excretory ducts, superior one, inferior one, leading over to the lacrimal sac and eventually the nasolacrimal duct, which leads out to the nose. You can see a picture of that popping up on your screen right now but where is this in the skull let's bring a skull in here and let's see this would be the left eye because this is lateral so imagine this eye right in here and this is the lacrimal bone so this green thing is sitting basically right on this bone right here and that nasolacrimal duct would travel down into the nasal cavity to drain. What else we got here? We got some ligaments on the lateral side, ligaments on the medial side, but there's a big muscle up here. Now this muscle would extend back this way, just like we can see on this picture right here. But this muscle is the levator palpebrae superioris, tough name to say and spell but a good muscle that elevates the superior tarsus uh, that's what it's attached to and it would pull back in that direction now if i take this off watch here if i take this off turn it around i want to show you guys the inside you can see that lacrimal gland and the inner parts of it looking around superior tarsus inferior tarsus even that lacrimal sac over here with the ligaments as well. Let me toss it over to the side and show you these. We got these extra ocular muscles that attach themselves to the sclera, the white part. Cornea would be this glass covering. But naming each of these, and again, these also have been cut. Superior rectus lateral rectus and i'll bring it all the way around underneath the fibers traveling straight back would be the inferior rectus and the fibers traveling to the side would be the inferior oblique medial rectus and just this little nub here is the superior oblique down here we can really see the inferior rectus coming straight back and the inferior oblique coming to the side yellow adipose tissue we got a bunch of bone around here a ton of bone as we would be in the maxilla and zygomatic region of the orbit of the eye the inferior portion of the orbit 
But let me swing it around to the back here as we see a nerve leaving the posterior aspect of the eyeball. And this is the optic nerve. Certainly an artery and a vein in there. Artery and a vein. But that nerve is the optic nerve. Again, if you want to see these on this model we got a different one just to show you real quick though see how the superior rectus goes all the way back the inferior rectus all the way back medial and lateral is missing but it would be right here i'll use my probe to represent that lateral rectus it's way down here the inferior oblique coming across there you see it inferior oblique coming across and here's the full superior oblique. Check out those other videos for more info on those muscles. Back to here though. Take off this outer layer. We can see the middle layer, the vascular layer, which includes the choroid nerves, yellow artery, red veins, blue. And it all comes out to this colored part of the eye, the iris which does have a hole in it. Look at that, that's a hole. And that's the pupil. This little area right here, you guys see the area where the probe is in between the cornea and the iris? This is called the anterior chamber, which is half of the anterior cavity. The anterior cavity is made up of this anterior chamber right here. And if we take off this middle layer, the lens is exposed. So the people, the people is a hole, but there's this lens in the way. And you guys see right where the probe is right now. Let me hold it steady for you. Right where the probe is right now is a little sliver of a space in between the iris and the lens. And that's the posterior chamber of the anterior cavity so this space here is the anterior chamber this space here is the posterior chamber and together they make up the anterior cavity so hopefully you're following along with that the lens itself has these ciliary bodies attached to them with some suspensory ligaments. You can't really see the suspensory ligaments, but they're there. They do show them in white on this side, stretching out to the lens. But as we get to the innermost layer, this is the retina. And notice how there's a serrated edge right here. That serrated edge is the aura serrata. It cuts or divides the iris and the ciliary bodies from the retina. And we know the retina is the area that has all the photoreceptors back here. So the light has to travel in and go back to the retina to be received. And way in the back of the eyeball, where the optic nerve comes in, that's the optic disc, is this spot right here. And right next to it, notice this little spot. And on some models, you might see a, an indent in this area, but the whole area is called the maculae lutei. And this specific spot is the fovea centralis. This is where the most photoreceptors are located in the retina. Now, right where the optic nerve enters slash leaves the eyeball, that's called the optic disc, the optic disc. There are no photoreceptors on the optic disc. Now this can produce a blind spot, but a blind spot is in your field of vision. It's not actually on the eyeball itself. This is called the optic disc, which can produce that blind spot. Now this whole area back here is called the posterior cavity or the vitreous chamber, which would be filled with vitreous humor. So nothing in here right now, but in order to hold the eyeball 
in an eyeball shape, you gotta have a gel or a substance to hold it into that shape. But this is pretty much the eyeball. I'm gonna remove the lens. It's a pretty solid structure. I'm gonna remove this part and nothing left. So that's it for the eyeball. I'm Professor Klein from the Human Anatomy Lab at Ohio University. Thanks for watching.